Welcome to ECLMO Learning Simplified and welcome to this lesson. In the previous lesson, we discussed terms associated with curved surfaces like an aperture, the pole, the center of curvature. We have the focal point, the principal axis, the focal plane, and many more. Now in this lesson, we're going to discuss the relationship between the radius of curvature and the focal length. We're going to realize that the radius of curvature is the distance from the pole to the center of curvature, and the focal length is the distance from the pole to the focal point. Later, we will discuss the laws of reflection, and in this case, what we're going to realize, reflection on curved surfaces also obeys the law of reflection. My name is Albert. I hope you will enjoy the lesson. By the end of this lesson, I expect you to be able to give the relationship between the focal length and the radius of curvature. Then later, you discuss the laws of reflection in curved mirrors. So before we proceed with this relationship between the radius of curvature and the focal length, it's very important for us to remind ourselves that the point called the C, which we call the center of curvature, is the center of the sphere from which this mirror was extracted. Like in this case, if you had a sphere like this, and then you extracted a very small section, which we now you have as uh, your mirror there, then this sphere had a center. Now this center where this mirror was coming from is what we call the center of curvature. Then we have another point which we call the focal point, and we say this focal point is a point where Paraxial rays, rays which are close but parallel to the principal axis will converge after reflection. Then we have another point here on the mirror which we call the pole. And this pole is the geometrical center of this mirror. Then now of course we said we have this line which we call the principal axis or the main axis. And we said it is simply a line which cuts through the center of curvature through the focal length or to the focal point the pole then now if you are keen enough you will realize if this point we call the center of curvature is at the middle of the sphere from which we extracted this mirror then if you get the distance from this uh, center of curvature to the one side of this uh, sphere then it's a radius of that sphere then now in this case if we are going to get the distance from the c that is center of curvature the pole that is one side of the mirror like in this case this is the same as this one here then this one we are going to call it the radius of curvature radius of curvature is defined as the radius of the sphere this radius here of this sphere from which this mirror was extracted we only extracted this mirror a very small piece but the radius of this sphere where the radius was that is the center of curvature that's what we are going to call the radius of Curvature. So radius of curvature is the radius of the sphere from which we extracted this mirror from. Now, in between the center of curvature and the pole, we have a point which we have called the focal point. And this focal point, that's where paraxial rays converge. So in this case, what we are going to realize is that between the focal point and the pole, this distance here, which we have called here F, this distance, which we can call small f is called the focal length. If you measure the distance between the pole and f, we are going to call it the focal length. So we can define focal length as the distance from the pole of a mirror to the principal focus, that is f. And then of course what we are going to realize is that the radius of curvature is twice the focal uh, length. So in this case, if you have r as your radius of curvature that is the distance the, the radius of the sphere from which the mirror was extracted from then it's going to be equals to 2 times the focal length which is the distance from the pole to the uh, focal point so now the relationship between radius of curvature and the focal length is that the radius of curvature is twice the focal length and now if you need now the focal length then what you will do you will take the radius of curvature you divide it by two then what you will get is the focal length 
So we are going to apply this rule more often or this relationship widely. So be very keen as we are going to handle two examples involving this concept. So the question reads, the figure below represents a concave mirror. Indicate the position of the focal point and state it is focal length. So here we have a center of curvature, that is C. Then we have the radius of curvature, that is the distance from the center of curvature to the pole. So it means here where it touches the mirror, with this is the principal axis. Where it touches the mirror, this is the pole. Then now they are asking us to determine or to indicate the position of the focal point and then determine the focal length. So here, the first thing that we must do is to know the relationship between R and F. In this case, we said the radius of curvature is twice the focal length. So in this case, if we have a radius of curvature as 4, then we are going to get our F as 2 times F. In this case, we will divide by 2 on both sides. Then we are going to get our F is equals to two two centimeter then in this case our f is two centimeter and then how did we define the focal length this is the focal length focal length is the distance from the pole to the focal point so it means for us to get the focal point then we are going to measure two centimeters from the pole but in this case the distance from the center of curvature to the pole is four it means two is a half of what we have so what we will do we will measure a half of this distance so if it is there then this will be our focal point and then it is a distance from the pole that's what we call the focal length which we write or which we call as f is equals to two centimeter so in this case you must use this relationship for you to identify the position of the focal point and then the figure that represents the focal length. So the second question reads, on the same grid, draw the position of the center of curvature and determine the radius of curvature. So in this case, we have to identify what they are asking us. They want us to find the radius of curvature and they also want us to determine the position of C on the grid. But what, what have they given us? They have given us the distance from the pole to the focal point and that's what we call the focal length F. So in this case, we have F as 3 centimeter. So now for us to get radius of curvature, R is equals to 2F. Now if we want R, then we are going to multiply 2 times the focal length, that is 3 centimeter. Then in this case, we are going to get our radius of curvature as 6 centimeter. So in this case, if we want the radius of curvature, and the radius of curvature, we define it as the distance from the center of curvature to the pole. So if already we have 3 centimeters from the pole to the F, then if we want C, we will draw another 3 centimeter. Then this will be our point C. Then now here the distance from the F to the C or the center of curvature will be 3 centimeter. So this one will make the whole distance from the pole to the center of curvature to be 6 centimeter. So through this, using this formula, it can help you to get the position of the focal point and the center of curvature. And it can also get help you to find the real length, that is the focal length and the radius of curvature. So we can now discuss the laws of reflection in curved mirrors. And what we are going to realize is the laws of reflection are obeyed either when you are using curved mirrors or plane mirrors like the one that we discussed in Form 1. So in this case, the three laws of reflection are still applied in these curved mirrors. Like the first one, the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection at the point of incidence. So in this case, if we consider a mirror like a convex mirror, like this one here, if we have the principal axis running through, through the pole to the focal point, to the center of curvature like that, if we have a ray of light moving close and parallel to the principal axis like that, we said this ray will appear to have emerged from F and then it will get reflected back like that. 
Now at this juncture where it touches this reflecting surface, if you draw a normal line, this N, this is the incident ray and this is the reflected ray, then now here if you, you measure this angle of incidence I, it will be equal to the angle of reflection R. And in this case, of course, if you have a concave mirror like this, then you have a principal focus running through. Then in this case, you have F and you have um, C. If you have a same ray, close but not touching the principal, or close but and parallel with the principal axis, then in this case, it's going to be like that. Then when it hits the mirror, it will get reflected, we say, it will go through F. In this case, if you draw a normal at the point where it touches the mirror, then what you are going to realize, the angle of incidence will be equal to the angle of reflection. And in this case, the laws of reflection are obeyed. Then the second law is that the incident ray, that is this incident ray, if you consider the first diagram, the incident ray there, this one here, then the, reflect, the normal line, this normal line, and the reflected ray all lie on the same plane at the point of incidence. So where it touches this, this mirror here, that's what we call the point of incidence. Now this incident ray, the normal and the reflected ray will be lying on that single point at the point of incidence. The same case here, the incident ray, the reflected ray and the normal line will lie at the same point all at the same plane at the point of incidence. So that's the second law of reflection is obeyed. Then in this case, it's going to obey the, the third law of reflection, which we call the law of reversibility of light, which states that the path of light rays are reversible. This means if you have a ray coming now from this point here, if this ray, the reflected ray that we had, if you reverse it, it will go to the mirror and then it will be reversed back to this point here. And if you have a ray which is coming in through point F, like in this second diagram, if you have a ray coming in through F, when it hits the mirror, it will be reflected parallel to the principal axis. So that is the third law of reflection, which says the path of light rays can be reversed. So the curved surfaces also obey the three laws of reflection. So that marks the end of our lesson today. In the next lesson, we will discuss ray diagrams.